This right here is a Kinder Surprise Egg. It's a chocolate, it's a toy, and it's loved the world over. Except in the US, where it's actually banned for reasons you're probably not aware of, because I wasn't either until I researched this video. I'd heard many rumors, none of them were true. All that and more in today's video, where we look at all the foods that the US has decided to ban from around the world to quote unquote, protect its citizens. Let's see about that. This pairs really well with the video I made a couple weeks ago, where we look at all the American food and food additives that are banned around the world. First up on our list of world foods the US has banned, haggis. Wait, haggis, the Scottish dish that I had to learn about to get my British citizenship came up specifically in my British citizenship test video? That haggis? What's wrong with that? It's pretty much a mixture of oats and spices rammed into a sheep stomach, sheep liver, and sheep lung. But it's been banned in the US since 1971? What gives? It's one of the specific ingredients. Is, is it sheep stomach? No, nah, sheep liver? That's totally fine. Sheep lung? Banned! <laughs> that is where the US FDA draws the lung. Well, I guess that makes sense if you think, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> Despite real haggis being banned in the States, you can buy lungless haggis, which is a really weird sentence to say. But if you are caught with traditional haggis in the USA, you will be fleeced of your money because you have to pay a fine. Okay, it's, it's illegal. I'm done with the sheep puns. He said sheepishly. But the whole sheep lung thing is another reason why black pudding, a pivotal part of a full English breakfast, is also banned in the States absolutely no lungs allowed. And so they replaced the black pudding with more pancakes and syrup, which is actually just corn syrup. Look it up. Most American pancake syrup has no maple syrup in it at all, is just high fructose <laughs> corn syrup. Sometimes I just want the corn syrup rather than the maple syrup, and it's like a third of the cause. Number two, now this one actually wildly surprised me. Have you ever heard of Tonka beans? If you're an American, you're like, I know what a Tonka truck is. Well, yes, imagine a Tonka truck, except don't do that, because it's a bean. <laughs> Tonka beans have an intensely strong flavor that resembles vanilla with a touch of magnolia and some caramel mixed in as well. And it is unanimously loved by all gourmet chefs. And think of it as a vanilla bean. You don't actually eat the vanilla bean. It's not like a can of Heinz. It's just, you know, you take the little tiny bits out and you mix it into your dish and that nice little flavor flavors your dessert. But this amazing flavor has a toxic secret. You see, it contains a chemical compound called coumarin which in large enough quantities is incredibly toxic to your liver and can also kill you. Yikes. So once a study had found that dogs and rats died from just two teaspoons of the stuff, the US FDA officially banned tonka beans in 1954. However, it is such a ubiquitous ingredient in gourmet cooking that gourmet chefs will continue to illegally import tonka beans into the States, despite the fact that the FDA have actually performed raids on different chefs' kitchens, going straight to their spice cupboard, being like, show me the beans. It's quite wild. Yet, despite the fact of there being threats of raids and also it being illegal completely, the US is still the number one importer of tonka beans around the world. Love it when a law works. <laughs> but if tonka beans are so dangerous, why is it so beloved in Latin America? And why is it that the EU hasn't banned it? They seem to be pretty trigger happy on making sure that everybody's safe and all. Lame. Time to finally use those math degrees I got. All right, let's do some math here, okay? So did you know that an amount of coumarin enough to kill you would be one gram? All right, so we got to avoid having one gram. How many tonka beans would it take to have one gram of coumarin? Well, that would be 30 whole beans. However, like I said, you don't eat a whole bean. It's actually used for flavoring a dish. Now, how many flavorings can we get out of one bean? Well, one tonka bean results in 80 dishes. So one bean flavors 80 dishes. And since you need 30 beans in order to have a toxic amount of coumarin in your system, that means you'd have to have 2,400 dishes worth of tonka beans in order to have a toxic effect on your body. Americans do eat a lot though. <laughs> so the US FDA might have blown things a little bit out of proportion with the tonka bean, but luckily for me, I live in the UK and the UK and the EU still have freedom to eat tonka beans. Also, I do find it really weird that this was the hill the FDA decided to die on because coumarin is also in cinnamon in a lot higher quantities, and yet that's fully legal. So, huh. I wonder what rival to tonka beans possibly paid the FDA for that law. Now, mustard oil isn't really a popular cooking ingredient in the States, but it really is with most Indian cooking, and it has been used in Indian cooking for centuries. The thing with mustard oil is it really has that intense mustard flavor that packs a punch, so you have to use it sparingly. 
And you also have to use it sparingly because it does have some toxic chemical compounds in it. Mustard oil contains high levels of erucic acid, which is potentially linked to heart problems. For this reason, the United States FDA have banned the use of mustard oil in all cooking practices. But that doesn't mean you can't find it on USA shelves. You see, there's a really easy loophole for this one. I've seen it before. You just gotta slap a label on it that says, not for human consumption. But, you know, whatever you do with it after you buy it, that's up to you. I don't know, I am use it in a soap. Give it to a child to give to someone else. Treat it like a pet rock. Helps me go use the loo. It makes me feel like I must hurt. Oil be sorry for that. Uh. I'm hurting myself with these puns. All right, next up, foie gras. The foie gras is actually a French delicacy made from a fattened duck or goose liver that's eaten in the form of a pâté. Now, I added foie gras to this list because in the last video, we saw that the EU bans a lot of US food based on their mistreatment of animals. But this is an example of the US doing that same thing. So the US doesn't really enjoy that in order to get foie gras, it means that you have to force feed the animals to a point that's pretty inhumane. And as much as I'm saying, you know, this is banned in the US, it's not actually statewide, just certain states that actually have slight morals for animal health, that being California. That being said, it is also illegal to produce foie gras in the UK, and it nearly became illegal to import last year, but uh, the bill never passed. But the French don't give a crap, okay? They don't give a quack. A quack, 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 quack. But I did just want to put this one out there because I felt like, even though it's not all the US, the, some of the states were like, don't do that bad thing to animals. So, slightly simple. Now, this one surprised me more than most of the other ones here, but in the US, it's illegal to slaughter a horse, AKA kill a horse primarily for human consumption. But that is totally fine in the UK and in the EU. In fact, you might have seen some news and the reports that Tesco used to have horse meat in their burgers and the UK went mad. There's quite a taboo on horse meat, I believe because the animals have helped us through a lot of forms of society. You know, we've ridden horses, a lot of people have them as pets. Heck. I grew up with two horses on my property, so like, I'm a big horse guy myself. But this is actually a good example of the US being like, hey, no, the UK not actually banning it, but going, eh, we don't really like it, but we'll have some horse meat in our Tesco burgers and complain about it. And then France going, shut up and let us enjoy our chavar. And now finally, the Kinder Surprise Egg. Now, most of you do know that the Kinder Surprise Egg is banned in the States. In fact, on the back here, it says, warning, toy inside. Boy, that's scary. I hate when there's toys. I'm glad there's a warning here. Small parts, adult supervision recommended. Not, not possible to sell to zero to three year olds. If I saw a two year old walking in my shop to buy one of these, go back to two year old school. What do they do? at two years old. Rupert Grint's two-year-old child just goes to Target. Now, most Brits that I've talked to know that the Kinder Surprise Egg is banned in the States, but most of them think it's because Americans are too stupid. They'll just eat the whole chocolate toy and all and choke the kids to death. That's not actually why. And quite insensitive. First of all, the truth is that the US placed a ban on Kinder Eggs before Kinder Eggs even existed. You see, in 1938, they placed a ban on food containing non-nutritive items, AKA the toy inside of a Kinder Egg. And this was a full 20 years before the Kinder Egg was even invented. Companies would just invent things and go, uh, use this for a cold, use it for a sore throat, selling it to people, not realizing because they didn't actually do any research, it was actually poison. So many Americans were poisoned, so many children died from this poisonous cough syrup that basically the president had to be like, whoa, hold on, we need a foundation to look over all the food and drugs that are entering our American citizens' bodies and making sure they're all safe, or at least that a really rich corporation is going to tell us that they're safe. And then the FDA was born. So it might be an archaic law that prevents the Kinder Egg from being sold in the US, but you can still get the variant of the Kinder Surprise called the Kinder Joy, which isn't really as joyous. It's basically a half toy, half weird chocolate mousse thing. I've never been a fan, but then again, I've also never really been a fan of these. As a kid though, the Wonder Ball, this type of thing, I would I would have really liked this to be honest. I enjoyed my Cracker Jacks. On die Kinder mag die Kinder nicht froh. Das ist Haribo, natürlich. And in almost all 50 states, the sale of unpasteurized or raw milk is fully illegal. In fact, there's a federal ban on the interstate sale of the stuff. So if it's illegal in the state you live in, you're not allowed to buy it from a vendor outside of your state. Everything is legal in New Jersey, except the sale of raw milk. That is banned. But on the other hand, Arizona actually allows raw milk to be sold as long as there's a nice warning label on it, which seems like the most sensible thing to do. Though when I think about it, choosing to live in Arizona is probably the least sensible thing you can do, so 
balances out. Now, the FDA's decision to ban raw milk was because the consumption of raw milk is linked to significant number of foodborne illnesses, some of which can result in serious complications and death. Fair enough. Like, okay, out of all of these, this seems the most fair of all of the FDA's complaints. I mean, we looked at the previous video, it was pretty much carcinogenic things that are actively killing you and harming children. And the FDA goes, that's cool. Even though 160 countries have banned it, we're going to keep it up because it makes people money. This is a case where they actually went, oh, you know, this isn't good. I don't agree with them because I feel like a warning would make more sense for this specific case. But what is it that Americans are missing out on, you might be wondering. You probably aren't someone that normally buys raw milk. No, but you probably buy stuff that raw milk is made into, such as clotted cream. They don't have clotted cream in the States. An authentic brie cheese. What? No, they don't have that common bear? <laughs> no, not happening. So many good cheeses. Do you now know why America has so many things like American cheese, spray cheese? They won't let us have good cheese. Monterey Jack is also top tier. Now you can find these types of illegal cheeses in the States, but they're not really authentic because they've been done using pasteurized milk, which changes the flavor profile quite a bit. So if you are an American watching this video, I highly encourage you, your next time you get to visit Europe to try out these cheeses that you don't get a chance to try because they're probably gonna blow your mind with just how good they are. I am very thankful for the amount of amazing cheeses I get to try. But that being said, I was gonna cut this one out. I wasn't gonna tell you, but I've been thinking about it ever since I learned about it, and now I want you to as well, okay? We're gonna talk about cheese. Now, everyone knows that mold makes some cheese taste pretty good. I love a good blue cheese. It's a bit of a weird thing, but it's tasty, okay? It's accepted. But there's a small island off of Italy, you know, Italian island of Sardinia. They've got a, a cheese that they've been working on for centuries. It's traditional. It's banned in the States. It's mostly banned in the EU, except because Sardinia is claiming it's traditional, they can't technically ban it there. And it's called Katsu Marsu. Now, Katsu Marsu, it directly translates to rotten cheese. Bear with me here. It's basically sheep's milk made into a Pepperino Romano cheese, a standard cheese wheel. And then they get a specific fly to lay eggs in there. And wait, just wait, it gets worse. They wait a couple months, open up the top, and then it's full of maggots just wriggling around. And that is, that is when it's at its peak. That is when you try this delicious katsu marsu. You dip some chips in it. You have some wine with it. It's supposedly a delicacy. And if the maggots are gone, well, you can't eat it anymore because that means it's too far gone. So you have to eat it maggots and all. And it's just, I will, listen, I will try anything. So I would try this, but we we can all agree, US, UK, most of the EU, we did a good thing banning this weird thing. Who was the first person to discover this? Just left his cheese out one. I have no more to eat. I must eat the rotten cheese. Oh, it's delicious. I asked my Italian friend about this and what her thoughts were. And she said, Evan, we Italians pretend Sardinia doesn't exist. I'd like to do. <laughs> but something that isn't incredibly cheesy. Today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Oh, Squarespace, what was that sound? Oh, Squarespace, of course, being your all-in-one website builder. That's how I built my website, evanedgar.com. Look at it, cool portfolio of prints I was able to do using one of Squarespace's many beautiful, professionally designed templates. Wow, so professional. I've even got a shop there. You can open a shop yourself, do whatever you want. They've even got 24 seven customer support. Squarespace is the best website builder you can get, and I stand by them. In fact, I stand by them so much just for me, nobody else. I actually got a discount for you. Squarespace.com slash Evan Ettinger or use code Evan Ettinger at checkout. Build your own website and you can get 10% off and get a free month. Thanks Squarespace for the sponsor. But without further ado, let's wrap this up. If you did enjoy this video and you like this new format thing that I'm trying out, please let me know because I am that YouTuber that does a lot of different things and the algorithm will poo poo on me for not doing only Duolingo videos or only British vs. America videos. So anytime I try and mix it up a little bit or put a spin on it or attempt to put more editing in, I suffer. <laughs> so thank you for the support over all the years. Very much appreciated. But if you're not fully filled in on interesting food facts, I did make a video looking at the most popular student foods across Europe. So I highly recommend you go check that one out. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye. I don't want to live there anymore. You can't buy good cheese at the grocery store. Everyone gets around the food laws anyway. God, how useless is the FDA? Mustard oil contains high levels of erucic acid, which is potentially linked to heart problems. What, what Scooby-Doo? Scooby-Doo's trying to go to sleep and uh, have a productive dream cycle. He's like, Roro Reggie, I'm trying to erucidream. <laughs>
No. 